All right, this is part four, uh, starting at concept 14.4, uh, the last of chapter 14. Um, so human genetics is very tricky to study because it's very difficult to manipulate humans or tell John, I need you to go mate with Jane so that I can see what kind of offspring you have and take uh, data on that. That's probably slightly awkward and immoral. Um, so what we have to do is we have to design and set up pedigrees using uh, family histories or family trees between parents and children. So here we see a couple different pedigrees. Uh, one showing a widow's peak, which is actually a monogenic trait, and attached or unattached earlobes, which again is monogenic uh, in humans. And the circles mean females, and the squares mean males. And typically the shaded in um, box means they have the affected uh, they are affected, meaning they have the trait or they have the disease that are, you're speaking of. Um, so here you see widow's peak is dominant, and here you see uh, attached earlobes is recessive, just depending on how you describe it. Uh, so we can also use these to make predictions about future offspring. A genetic counselor, for example, would collect your family history and your pedigree and try to make predictions about the likelihood of certain diseases, for example, uh, largely done in uh, genetic disorders. Uh, that are inherited, and it's often easiest for recessive alleles. Um, people can be carriers of uh, disease alleles or um, traits um, because they can be heterozygous. If the trait or the disease is a recessive disease or trait, then you can carry it, and we call them carriers. It basically means they're heterozygous. Uh, cystic fibrosis is an example of a uh, autosomal recessive disease, um, and it uh, causes a mucus buildup in some internal organs, including the lungs, making it difficult to breathe, uh, and blocks and prevents uh, nutrient absorption. It actually um, messes and mutates a um, sodium pump in the lining of the lungs that uh, prevents the removal or movement of sodium um, out of the lungs and thus the sodium attracts water and it builds up inside the, uh, or on the lining of the lung. Sickle cell disease is another example. Um, it's a autosomal recessive disease, and by autosomal we mean one of the chromosomes between numbers 1 and 22 that is not a sex chromosome, which would be pair number 23. Um, so sickle cell disease is caused from a substitution of just one amino acid in hemoglobin, and that uh, creates a sickled shape for the red blood cell and thus inhibits or um, reduces its ability to bind to oxygen. Um, so there's a whole variety of things that can happen to people with sickle cell disease. Uh, consanguineous marriages, uh, basically they are frowned upon, so to speak, because of the genetic factor be, uh, by increasing the appearance or the occurrence in a population of recessive diseases. Uh, if you're within a family, you're more likely to both carry a recessive allele and thus increase the opportunity for um, the appearance of recessive diseases, and thus the main basis for why consanguineous matings are frowned upon. Uh, there are some dominant diseases. It's not all recessive. So, for example, achondroplasia, which you might know as dwarfism, um, is a dominant disease, and in fact, when it's homozygous dominant, um, it's lethal, and the organism does not uh, survive, or the human does not survive. Um, in this case, you have a heterozygous individual, and this, uh, this man is heterozygous. Um, if he's homozygous recessive, he's normal. And so um, dwarfs can have normal-sized individuals. If, um, if the 25% uh, of the time, they would have a normal-sized individual. Huntington's disease is a neurodegenerative disease. Um, that uh, doesn't rear its ugly head until about 40 years old. And it is also an autosomal dominant disease. Here you see this woman looking at a uh, family tree, a uh, quite significant one. So quick review, uh, a lot of human diseases have both genetic and environmental components. Um, I'll leave you to fill in these blanks um, that we've done, uh, we did on a previous slide. And so heart disease and cancer and uh, just about almost every single disease that we know or can attribute to humans, or many of them, um, have environmental components that play a role. Uh, maybe cystic fibrosis does not, and Huntington's does not. They're largely or, or um, only genetic, but many, many diseases are both genetic and environmental. 
and how they uh, progress. So we already mentioned genetic counselors. They can help a family to determine um, the history of their disease and, and make predictions about the future. Um, and uh, did that. And so uh, when having a, a child, so for example, for me, when my mom had me, she was 35. And at the age of 35, um, the incidence of non-disjunction disorders, which is a complicated way of saying a genetic disorder caused by the incorrect splitting of chromosomes during meiosis. Uh, an example would be Down syndrome, which is trisomy 21, or three copies of chromosome number 21. Uh, incidence of those types of diseases jumps up significantly at around the age of 35. It's kind of like when the woman's eggs start to get old. Um, so there's uh, fetal testing that is done uh, in utero to determine if any genetic diseases are carried by the, or, or the child has any of these genetic diseases to then give the parents the option, should they choose, of aborting the, the offspring or preparing ahead of time for, um, for what is going to come about. So two of those types of fetal testing is amniocentesis and chorionic villus sampling. These are not done as often anymore because uh, of the increase in technology with ultrasound and taking measurements of certain facial features and so on, but uh, these two tests uh, by collecting cells from the fetus. Um, in amniocentesis, the fetus is floating in amniotic fluid, and some of the fluid is drawn off uh, from inside the amnion, or the, the sac that the baby is floating in, the fetus is floating in. And within that liquid are found some of the baby's cells that have sloughed off. Um, and chorionic villus sampling is a similar idea, but you take some of the baby's cells from the, the placental side, the baby's placental side, and test those. And you basically look at all the chromosomes, you create what is called a karyotype, a visual diagram of all the baby's chromosomes, and look, comparing it to normal, about what might be the issue. Here's what it looks like. Here you have amniocentesis on the left, uh, inserting a needle into the mother's stomach and drawing out some of the uh, amniotic fluid, uh, growing out the cells and creating a karyotype, and then looking at that karyotype to see, is that normal? Uh, and then here you see CVS, or chorionic villus sampling. Um, the same idea, take fetal cells, um, look at them under a microscope to identify uh, a karyotype. And we are done. <laughs>